Welcome to BI Sims Gear Studio Component Creation Tutorial. This video is a follow-up to our Gear Studio product overview video, which provides an introduction to Gear Studio and describes how it can streamline the development of modular software products. In this video, we'll go into greater detail about how to create a component and show examples of how Gear Studio can help you develop software more efficiently and effectively. Now, let's take a look at this process in action in Gear Studio. A component is a black box of functionality that interfaces with other components. All Gear's components communicate via formally defined interfaces called APIs. Components are grouped into Gear's products to help users manage compatible versions of components as a single unit. There are two types of products, standalone products and product extensions. Standalone products consist of an executable that implements the Gear's framework and components that implement functionality on top of that. Product extensions consist exclusively of components. Product extensions depend on a base application that implements the Gears framework. The components interface with the base application using APIs from an SDK. Let's consider a hypothetical product composed of the two components, user interface and shop. The user interface component would encapsulate generic functionality to display a user interface and send user interaction events to components that are listening for them. The shop component would encapsulate specialized functionality for a shop simulation. The shop component would use the user interface component to display a user interface for the shop and receive user interaction events for the shop simulation. Now that we know how our shop application will work, we will implement it with the help of Gear Studio. We will start by creating a product to group the relevant components. Then we will create the components which will encapsulate each piece of functionality. Finally, we will implement the functionality of each component in our code editor of choice. We should end up with a Gears application that we can interact with. Welcome to Gears Studio. This is the dashboard. From here you can create products open products on the computer, and with Gear Studio Professional, import products from the JFrog Artifactory. From here we will create a product. We will name it Shop. Now we have to set the product properties. The development directory is where the source files for the components are stored. We will leave it as the default value for this example. The application directory is where built components will be deployed to. We'll set the base application to Example Mart. Example Mart is a simple application that implements the Gears component framework. SDKs are groups of APIs that are used to interface with a base application. Example Mart does not expose any APIs, so we will leave the SDK set to None Selected. Now let's click Create. This is the shop product. On this screen, we can manage all aspects of our product. The bar along the top here is the product toolbar. These are actions that apply to the product as a whole. On the left is the component toolbar. When you select a component, this will populate with useful actions that can be applied to the components. In the center of the screen here is where the components of the products will be listed. Our product does not currently contain any components. We can add components using the plus in the bottom right corner. We can create a new component, create a new executable, or, with Gear Studio Professional, import a previously built component from the JFrog Artifactory. We will begin by creating a component. We'll name our component User Interface. For this example, we do not need to sign our component with a certificate, or set up a source control system, or set up any references. We want other components to interact with the User Interface component and control what is being displayed. Here in the API Editor tab, we'll create an API to do just that. We'll call it User Interface API. Now we will add a function to the API that will change what is being displayed on the user interface. We'll call it Display. It will take in some text and then an array of strings for the different options that can be selected to progress.
It will then return a number for the index of the option that the user selects. That's it for our API. Pretty simple. Now that we've defined our API, let's generate our new user interface component. Gear Studio is now generating the boilerplate code for the component. The code will create the user interface API for us according to what we just defined and will enable the component to be loaded by gears. This is where things begin to come together. Now we will create the shop component. It will not be implementing any of its own APIs. It will only be consuming the user interface API. So here in the references tab is where we define that dependency. We will add user interface API as a dependency. This will connect the dependency to our code editor project for us to use later on. That's all we need to do here. Now we can click generate. Now that we have the skeleton of our shop product, we need to flesh it out by implementing the functionality of our components. We can click Code Editor to open the solution for a specific solution, but Gear Studio has a helpful feature called Super Solution. This is a single solution that contains all of the projects for all of the components in the product. This makes it easy to edit and debug code across multiple components. All of our changes will be made to these two library projects. Let's implement the user interface component. Here you can see some function stubs that Gear Studio generated for us. They're commented inline to explain how they're expected to be used. Here are some components we will be using. For the user interface component, we will just implement the display function. Here's the display function. Here's some code I prepared ahead of time to do what we want. It simply prints the text and the options, and then returns the index of the selection that the user makes. Now let's implement the shop component. We will include the user interface API and some other components we will be needing. This question class will be used to interface with the user interface API in an object-oriented manner. Here. In the one start function, we want to define how our program will begin. The first thing we need to do is request the user interface API from the Gears API Manager. Then, we want to set up some questions to define the behavior of the shop. This essentially builds a state machine, which selections lead to what questions, and starts it at the end. Now that we've implemented our component, we click Build to compile the application. With that done, we can run it and see how it works. And here it is! We just created some component, wrote a few lines of code, and now we have a product running with its functionality separated into simple modules. We can buy, we can sell, we can exit the application. The beauty of component-based software development is that these modules can be reused. We can easily reuse the functionality in the user interface component, and we simply need to implement a component for the specialized logic. Let's do that now. I'll deactivate the shop component for now, since we will be running different logic in our new application and create a new component. Let's call this one pull. Similar to shop, it will not be implementing any of its own APIs, but it will be consuming the user interface API. So here in the references tab, we will add the user interface API. Now we can click generate. Let's open the pull solution. So let's open the component implementation. Add our components in the question class that we're using the shop component. 
request our API and implement the functionality for our pull application. Let's build this. Build succeeded. Run it. And here it is. A different application without having to recreate everything from scratch. As you can imagine, this can develop into an ecosystem of generic components where applications are built out of these blocks. Their concerns are kept focused, and their implementations are kept hidden behind clearly defined interfaces. You can see an example on the Gear Studio website, and if you're interested in a Gear Studio Professional Edition, contact the BI Sim sales team at sales at bisimulations.com to learn more. We hope you're as excited as we are about using Gear Studio, and welcome to the community of Gear Studio developers.